morning student i am dr dharmendra bian uh, this is my fifth session on elementary theory of partition especially that is a unit 4 in theory of partition university of mysore today i discuss that euler mm, pentagonal theorem and also uh, one corollary how can you find out that uh, partition of a number that is p of 1 is equal to 1 p of 2 is equal to 2 p of 3 is equal to 3 like why like the terms is we can take in the uh, iteration formula that is p of n is equal to p of n minus 1 minus p of n minus 2 like why like the terms is we have taken the uh, some theorem on euler pentagonal theorem so we start the session that is uh, before that one we can find out what is that uh, uh, euler pentagonal numbers not that is uh, if uh, n is a pentagonal number then n can be written as n is equal to 3m square minus m divided by 2 when i have to take that value of m is equal to 0 uh, that is the term is n is equal to 0 m is equal to 1 that n is equal to 1 n is equal to 2 that is 5 likewise the term is that is the first pentagonal number n is equal to 0 1 5 12 22 35 likewise when i have to take in this formula that's euler pentagonal uh, pentagonal number it is when i have to replace the value of uh, m by minus m so here already when i have to take m by m minus m means here m square is there that is minus m square means that is uh, once again that is m square here minus of minus m that becomes plus so therefore the pentagonal number the another formula of pentagonal number is as n is equal to 3 m square plus m divided by 2 here also if i have to take m m is equal to 0 that is 0 m is equal to 1 that is the value is 2 likewise we have to observe here and 7 15 26 40 so when i have to consolidation of the, when i have to taking the two values the pentagonal numbers are 0 1 2 5 7 12 15 22 26 20, 35 40 that depends upon if we are taking that negative that is the first formula that is m in 3 into m square minus m divided by 2 that is the pentagonal number when i have to replace m by minus m so that is the next form that is m 3m square plus m divided by 2 so overall that it came written as n is equal to 3m square plus r minus uh, m divided by 2 that is a pentagonal number so these are the numbers so we have to take in that finally that is 0 1 2 5 7 12 15 the recurrence formula we have to use these values okay yes. let us go to the theorem the theorem let uh, p not there is a piece of fix o of d comma n that this uh, that denotes the number of partition of n into the capital d, d that is distinct and that o indicates there is a odd number parts the term is let p suffix uh, o of d comma m denotes the number of partition of n into distinct and odd parts Again, we have to take let p suffix e. That is, e means that is a even number. That is, d is distinct. That denotes the number of partition of n into distinct and even number of parts. Distinct and even number of parts, not even numbers. Even number of parts here, odd number of parts. That is, in terms of lambda is equal to lambda one comma lambda two comma. If the terms is only one term. that is lambda n is equal to 1 that is the odd part lambda 1 is equal to 1 and the total lambda is equal to uh, lambda 1 when i have to take n is equal to 2 2 can be written as 2 comma 1 plus 1 so therefore there is a two parts uh, e2 e, overall the parts is 2 but the distinct odd parts there is no distinct odd parts that is the distinct odd parts is 0 one way to take the terms is uh, uh, even or uh, distinct odd parts is one distinct even part that is 1 plus 1 if the value comes once again the repeatedly they won't can consider the terms is so distinct even parts is zero a uh, distinct odd parts that is one that is where that is the statement then it can be written as Uh, p suffix e of d comma n minus p suffix o of d comma n is equal to minus one to the power of m if n is a pentagonal number. Can I put terms of if m is a 
pentagonal number otherwise uh, that is is equal to 0 uh, in earlier class we already discussed the terms is a partition of uh, even number of uh, even number and uh, distinct parts is equal to partition of uh, odd number uh, and also distinct parts both are equal there is one 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 mapping if it is not equal that value is equal to minus 1 to the power of n if n is a pentagonal number you can observe the terms is we can the proof we shall attempt uh, to uh, uh, establish one one correspondings uh, between a partitions uh, uh, enumerated by p suffix e of d comma n and those enumerated by p suffix o of d comma n for for integers n our attempt will be successful if it is uh, not a pentagonal number the values are uh, the pentagonal numbers is 0 1 2 5 uh, 7 if it is not a pentagonal number both that values are is it, when I take in the terms is uh, the subtraction of uh, partition enumerated by distinct uh, even parts minus partition enumerated by uh, odd number odd and distinct uh, parts is equal to 0 otherwise that is equal to minus 1 to the power of m if n is a uh, pentagonal number ok. But to take some examples uh, however n is uh, one of the pentagonal number that is uh, m is equal to 3 m plus 1 by 2 that means uh, is positive number uh, a for a single exceptional case will arise for each partition that lambda is equal to lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda r and n the terms of uh, n partition of n and defines s, s of lambda can the terms is s of lambda the smallest part of lambda that is the smallest part of lambda that is that last value that is s of lambda is equal to r so the, how can you find out the terms of lambda 1 lambda 2 that is a non increasing order you can observe the terms of there is a non increasing order the terms of lambda is equal to lambda 1 comma lambda 2 comma lambda r so when I have to take uh, 2, the partition of 2 can be written as 2 comma 1 plus 1. Okay, observe terms of the two, here we have to consider the terms of what is that S of lambda. So when I have to take the terms is uh, suppose when I have to take uh, 6, 6 can be written as the terms is um, 6 comma we can take the term where number is 4 comma uh, 6 comma 4 comma 4 plus 2 comma 3 plus 3 likewise the terms is here we have to choose that is a uh, smallest number of uh, lambda ok and let uh, sigma of lambda denotes the largest uh, j such that uh, lambda j is equal to lambda 1 minus j plus 1 here lambda j means that is a successive um, part uh, the terms successive part of lambda the terms is here sigma lambda denotes the number of consecutive uh, integer that are uh, part of lambda that is the successive numbers uh, to take in the numbers that is the success, successive part of lambda so, uh, there is a consecutive integer that are part of lambda and we have transformed the partition as follows ok here sigma s of lambda is the smallest part of lambda that is you can take in that last value that is uh, lambda r so it, it must be in terms of a non increasing order and also that we can carefully observe the terms that is a piece of fix e of d comma n that is a distinct part we have to consider only in terms of odd number of partition enumerated by odd number uh, uh, odd number and a distinct parts if p suffix e of d comma n means partition enumerated uh, into uh, even number with distinct parts. So, will not consider the repeated numbers ok and distinct parts that must be having a distinct part. Suppose we have to consider that lambda is equal to 10 comma 9 comma 8 comma 4 comma 2 we can observe the terms is here overall that parts 1 2 3 4 5 
that is partition of uh, you odd number of parts odd number of parts with distinct numbers so there is no repeated numbers 10 9 8 4 2 so overall the terms is five numbers so that is a partition of n in partition enumerated uh, n into a odd number with distinct parts okay so we look what are repeated okay can observe terms there is no repeated values so we can consider lambda 1 is equal to 10 lambda 2 is equal to 9 lambda 3 is equal to 8 lambda 4 is equal to 4 and lambda 5 is equal to 2 so which is the smallest number here you can easily predict the smallest number is 2 that is lambda 5 so uh, that's why i can consider that previous slide that is lambda r is equal to the terms of uh, this one the terms is s of lambda so therefore the smallest value here uh, uh, lambda 5 is equal to s of lambda can observe the terms is uh, that is, is equal to 2 so then the smallest part of lambda is that is 2 so that can be written as s of lambda is equal to lambda 5 that is, is equal to 2 now we can find out that is a uh, consecutive uh, integer or successive um, numbers uh, continuous number that is 10 9 8 can observe terms of consecutive integers there is no bracket the terms is, is uh, 7 is absent so therefore the consecutive integer that is 10 9 8 so definitely the sigma of uh, lambda is 3 value okay the sigma of lambda is 3 so with the condition of lambda j is equal to you can observe terms of lambda j is equal to lambda 1 minus j plus 1 so definitely that condition must be applied here you can observe here lambda sigma of lambda denotes the number of consecutive integer that is and that are part of lambda is lambda j is equal to lambda 1 minus j plus 1 if the condition must be satisfied so we have to take that example suppose j is equal to 1 so then what is lambda 1 we can observe the terms of j is equal to 1 means here lambda 1 is equal to lambda 1 minus uh, 1 plus minus 1 plus 1 so minus 1 plus 1 get cancelled we have to observe here lambda 1 is equal to lambda 1 minus lambda oh, 1 is sorry j is 1 plus 1 that is plus 1 minus 1 get cancelled that is lambda 1 is equal to 10 the terms is there that is equal to lambda 1 10 so definitely that must be satisfied the condition that is lambda j is equal to lambda 1 if j is equal to 1 suppose j is equal to 2 you can observe the terms of so that value must be is equal to lambda 2 value must be is equal to 9 otherwise that condition is fail so then lambda 2 is equal to lambda 1 minus lambda 2 because j is equal to 2 uh, plus 1 that is uh, minus 2 plus 1 that is minus 1 that is lambda 2 is equal to 10 minus 1 that is equal to lambda 2 is equal to 9 so definitely that is also correct this here lambda 2 is equal to 9 similarly uh, j is equal to 3 that is uh, then lambda 3 is equal to lambda 1 minus minus 3 plus 2 that is is equal to here minus 3 plus 2 means that is minus 2 that is lambda 3 is equal to 10 minus 2 which implies lambda 3 is equal to 8 that is also correct we have to observe here lambda 3 is also 8 so then we have to take the terms is uh, if la j is equal to 4 then lambda 4 is equal to lambda 1 minus 4 plus 1 because j is equal to 4 minus 4 plus 1 that is minus 3 so therefore lambda 3 is equal to some lambda 4 is equal to 10 minus 3 so therefore lambda 4 is equal to minus 7 it is not possible because lambda 4 is equal to 2 so we can easily take the terms is lambda sigma of lambda denotes the number of consecutive integer so therefore that is j is equal to 3 so therefore it can be written as then sigma of lambda is equal to it is sigma of lambda there are three parts the terms is 10 9 8 and the transformation is you can observe terms of the transformation is we have to delete the smallest part and we should add the two numbers so we can observe terms of that is the two number so we can split into two parts the terms is one plus one we can add to the consecutive parts highest consecutive parts that can be written as the highest consecutive is 10 and 9 
we can add that one one year one to each number of consecutive number that is 9 10, 11 10 8 4 okay so that must be satisfy the condition partition of uh, odd number and distinct that is map to partition enumerated uh, partition enumerated even number and distinct parts you can observe terms of lambda dash similarly when i have to take the next example suppose lambda is equal to 9876432 so what is that the sig uh, s of lambda that is the smallest part is 3 and the terms is uh, what is the consecutive numbers or consecutive integers are 9876 here 5 is not there so therefore uh, here sigma of uh, lambda is equal to 4 here also sigma of lambda is 3 number you can observe terms is so here sigma of lambda is equal to 4 and s of lambda is 3 so here also when i have to delete the 3 and we can these 3 we have to split into 3 that is 1 plus 1 plus 1 we can add to the consecutive integers so that is the only 3 numbers that is uh, 9 plus 1 10 8 plus 1 9 and 7 plus 1 8 that is lambda dash is equal to 10 9 8 6 4 so therefore the smallest part is 3 and sigma of lambda is equal to 4 here the distinct even parts are mapped to distinct odd part we can observe here that is a distinct even part here distinct odd part here this one is distinct odd parts mapped to distinct even parts okay distinct we can observe the uh, word that is a distinct number so therefore these two are mapping similarly we can take in the case here there are two cases the possible case if uh, the small uh, say s of lambda is the smallest number and sigma of lambda is the consecutive integers number of consecutive integers so here the case is s of lambda is less than or equal to sigma of lambda the another case is that lamb, sigma of lambda is strictly less than s of lambda there are two cases will be appear here the case one where sigma of lambda is less than or equal to sorry s of lambda is less than or equal to sigma of like lambda in this case we delete the smallest part and add to one and add to one to each of the sigma of lambda largest parts okay add 1 to we can observe the sentence add 1 to each of the sigma of lambda largest part thus so we can consider that is uh, that mapping the terms is uh, in terms of a uh, what you have to call uh, uh, in terms of uh, so lambda is equal to uh, 7 6 4 3 2 okay that map to lambda 1 or lambda dash is equal to 8, 7, 4, 3. We can observe that values here the smallest part is 2. Okay. Here the smallest part is 2. We can delete the smallest part. Uh, we can observe here in the next add 1 to each. Add 1 to each if the condition is add 1 to each the successive uh, integer. That is here successive integers are. 7 and 6 we can add the terms is that value says 1 and 2 so therefore that is s of lambda is 2 and sigma, sigma of lambda is also is equal to 2 because there are only two consecutive numbers the terms of our consecutive integers that's 7 and 6 we can add to these two that is uh, 8 comma 7 comma 4 comma 3 that is that mapping here so we are using that ferret diagram we can easily show on this one it's a mapping so the term says uh, 7 6 4 3 2 what is that successive terms highest successive terms are 7 and 6 you can observe terms of what is the smallest part uh, that is a sigma of lambda is equal to 2 successive part okay and uh, uh, here this one is the smallest part that is s of lambda so delete this uh, s of lambda sorry s of lambda and we can add to this each successive part so that is each successive part so terms is this one is 1 to 1 that is 7 that becomes 8 again that values of 6 that becomes 7 
so therefore it can be written as that is 8 7 4 3 so what is the the successive terms the previous one that is the 7 and 6 so there is this one so now it becomes 8 and 7 so we can add to here the condition is if s of lambda is less than or is equal to sigma of lambda on that time we can delete this smallest part and we can add to the successive part one to we can add one to each successive part okay so therefore the terms of lambda is equal to 7 6 4 3 2 uh, we here we delete the smallest part in lambda and add one to each that is what is that each number is consecutive numbers are 7 and 6 so we get uh, lambda 1 is equal to or lambda dash is equal to 8 7 4 3 so here also we can observe terms of this one is odd part and this one is even parts even number of parts distinct even number of parts here distinct odd number of parts so the condition is s of lambda is less than or equal to sigma of lambda so that means the both are values are same here s of lambda and sigma of lambda both are same that is that value is equal to 2 that is the sig that is we have to take is less than or equal to so in this case we have to delete the smallest part and can we can add to the largest part the term successive parts the, the second case if uh, sigma of lambda is less than s of lambda so in this case we subtract one from each of sigma of lambda that is that what is the consecutive number so on that terms we can delete that one one parts this is the one one consecutive numbers and we can add to the new smallest part we can observe terms of we can add to new smallest part that is s of lambda largest part of lambda and insert new smallest part of uh, sigma of lambda thus that number can be written as that is not s uh, sigma of lambda that is s, s of lambda okay it can be written as the term says you can consider that uh, sigma lambda is equal to 98654 that is that odd numbers with distinct parts or with distinct parts that can be written as what is the consecutive numbers here the consecutive numbers here 986 that is sigma of lambda is equal to 3 and the smallest part is that is s of lambda is 4 so what is the condition in this case we have to subtract one from each of sigma of lambda the successive terms are 9 8 6 we can delete one one the term says this one becomes 8 and this one becomes 7 when it was subtract here this one becomes 7 uh, 5 the term says uh, it can be written as the term says uh, sorry 9 8 only the term says we can delete the terms of this one is 8 the successive terms are 2 9 and 8 the smallest number is 4 we can delete that only two numbers that is uh, uh, this becomes 8 and this becomes 7 that is 8 uh, 7 6 5 4 and what we have to delete the terms is we can add to the new smallest uh, number that is 2 so we have to observe here lambda dash is equal to 8 7 6 5 4 2 this is also a distinct with even number of parts 1 2 3 4 5 6 so we can observe terms of distinct with even number of parts so we are using by Ferre diagram that is 9 8 6 5 4 so what is that uh, largest uh, or the successive integers terms is we can observe the terms is that is 9 and 8 and what is the smallest numbers that is s of lambda the terms is s of lambda is 4 so we can delete that successive integers from 1 1 so each number from 1 1 and we can insert to that that is the smallest part we can insert to the smallest part so that is that number is so when I have to delete 1 1 from the successive terms that becomes 8 7 6 5 4 and the smallest part becomes 2 you can observe here that is 8 7 6 
five four two the terms is okay and the next one so that this the condition that is consecutive integer or successive part is two that is uh, sigma of lambda and that is our nine and eight and smallest parts is uh, that is a uh, four we subtract to one from each successive part of uh, sigma that is lambda that is nine eight six five four we get lambda dash or lambda one is equal to at say eight seven six five four two not this one is five that is two okay so it is odd number and distinct is mapped to a distinct parts with even number okay even parts not numbers similar example is another example is if you take you can check yourself that is a 20 19 18 10 and 5 what are the consecutive numbers 20 uh, 19 18 so therefore sigma of lambda is equal to 3 and the smallest part is 5 that is s of lambda is 5 we have to delete the uh, lot the successive parts that is a uh, year 19 so year 18 this one is 17 so 3 so uh, that they, they we have to add to that is a new smallest part so that can be written as lambda dash is 19 18 17 uh, the terms is uh, 10 5 3 okay so therefore s of lambda is equal to 5 and here the terms is sigma of lambda is 3 so the above procedure in the either case uh, changes the uh, quality or pretty of the number of parts of the partition and note that exactly one case is applica applicable to any partition thus this mapping establish a one one corresponding co correspondence but that however uh, there are certain partition for which the mapping will not work okay you can observe the terms is uh, for example so all the partition not working that in the same same way when i have to delete or add to smallest number or the uh, smallest number to the successive part okay when i have to delete the smallest part to successive terms and when i have to delete the successive term to uh, insert a new smallest part so it is not applicable just yes, we have to observe that example here yeah, when i have to take uh, consider uh, lambda is equal to 8 7 6 5 so that is a consecutive number all are consecutive numbers 8 7 6 5 so what is the smallest part is here it's 5 we can observe the terms is that means so this the case is uh, this, uh, sigma of lambda is 4 and the smallest part is 5 that means that is sigma of lambda is strictly less than s of lambda so here the term says s of lambda is 5 and sigma of lambda is 4 when if we in this case we have to delete the each term you can observe the terms of and to delete that each successive terms to 1 1 so 7 6 5 4 so how many parts there are four parts successive parts so when you have to delete that four terms you can insert to the new uh, smallest part that is also 4 so therefore it is uh, not distinct we can observe terms is here sigma of lambda is uh, strictly less than s of lambda a case it should be applicable it that is sigma of uh, lambda is equal to 8 7 6 5 that can be written as sigma la or lambda dash is equal to 7 6 5 4 4 so this one is not distinct our case is it is a partition uh, enumerated into even number uh, even number with distinct part is the terms is minus partition enumerated odd number of with odd number with distinct parts okay odd number with distinct part that is equal to minus 1 to the power of n otherwise that value is equal to 0 this is that case and it is not distinct the terms is that is the terms is uh, if it is that value so all the case is not possible the terms here it is not distinct we can observe the terms of so therefore this partition is not applicable for this theorem that is p suffix e of d comma n minus p suffix o of d comma n that's equal to minus 1 to the power of n otherwise that value is equal to 
0 if n is a uh, pentagonal number. So, this is the not cast, it is not distinct, you can observe terms of that is a repeated numbers. Uh, so, on the, the parts is odd, here the parts is even number of parts, distinct and even number of parts, but is, this one is odd number of parts, not distinct. Okay. So, all the partition couldn't let's take in that easily. So, okay, you can carefully taking that example and you can take that values. Here, 8, 7, 6, 5, you can, you can observe terms of. So, what is the largest part is? The largest parts, uh, consecutive parts is that is uh, 8, 7, 6, 5. So, we can delete the terms uh, sigma of lambda is equal to 4 and smallest part is that is uh, 5, that is S of lambda. So, we have to delete that part. So, delete the each successive terms or uh, each consecutive terms 1, 1. So, and then insert to new or smallest part that is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that becomes that is a 7, 6, 5, 4, 4. So, so, that number is repeated. So, this example is not applicable for this theorem. So, therefore, you can carefully take that example and you can show this theorem. Okay. Here, lambda dash has no, no distinct parts that is it has 7, 6, 5, 5, 4. So, another example similarly we have to take the terms is this one 9, 8, 7, 6 that can be written as it is 8, uh, 7, 6, 5, 5. Okay. will not consider this, this type of example. So, what are the two cases? The two cases are uh, S of lambda, the first case is S of lambda is less than or equal to sigma of lambda that is the terms of if it is the both the values are same. Okay. And the another one is the sigma of lambda is less than S of lambda. Okay. So, note that the, the image, uh, image partition is no longer one with the distinct parts in fact breaks down in precisely those cases when the partition has R parts. Okay. So, what is the second case? The second case is, uh, is uh, sigma of lambda is less than uh, S of lambda. So, we have to choose sigma of lambda is equal to R. So, that definitely S of lambda is more than R. So, we can consider that is R plus 1. So, the total number of points is the total number of points is r you can observe terms of the total number of points is r but starting with r plus 1 okay another terms of starting with r plus 1 so it can be written as r plus 1 up to r term that must be is equal to r that last term that is r so it can be written as we can consider the first one r plus r plus r plus r the another one is that is 1 plus 2 r. So, so it can be written as uh, how many terms of r that is total number of terms is r. So, it can be written as r into r plus. So, this one the sum of r numbers it can be written as r into r plus 1 by 2 or it can be written as this one is r square plus r into r plus 1 by 2. When I have to take in that LCM that is a 2 r square plus r square it is not r square 2 r square that is simply r square it is not it is a typing mistake it is only r square plus r. So, 2 r square plus r square that becomes 3 r square plus r by 2. So, that becomes a, a pentagonal number or it can be written as 3 r into 3 r plus 1 by 2 which is a pentagonal number ok. That is partition partition enumerated uh, even number of even number with uh, distinct even number even number with distinct parts okay even number with distinct parts minus you can observe terms of minus partition odd number of uh, partition enumerated odd number of uh, with distinct parts that is is equal to the terms is if s of sigma of lambda is less than s of lambda the terms is it is a pentagonal number you can observe terms is the next case is the first case on the other end the case one breaks down when the partition has only r parts if it is a r parts means that is a sigma of uh, 
So S of lambda is less than or equal to sigma of lambda. We have to take the terms of sigma of lambda is equal to R and S of lambda is also R. So only R parts, the terms is in this total number of points R, R, it can be written as the terms is the first number is R and ending the terms is R means that is a R plus 0, you can observe in terms of R plus 0 to R minus 1, you can observe in terms of all terms only. So what are the terms is? So therefore, 1, 2, 3, R minus 1 means that is R parts. So it can be written as the terms is R plus R plus R plus R that is a R time R that is the terms is here 1 plus 2 to up to R minus 1. So it can be written as R into R plus uh, sum of R minus 1 is that is a R minus 1 into R by 2. So therefore, uh, when I have to take in that LCM that is a 2 R square plus R square minus R by 2 that is uh, 3 R square minus R by 2. So, this one is again there is a pentagonal number. So, R into 3 R minus 1 by 2 which is also a pentagonal number. So, in the both the case it will appear the pentagonal number the terms is uh, partition enumerated the pentagonal. Consequently, if n is not a pentagonal number that if that, that value becomes partition enumerated this enumerated into even number with distinct parts is equal to partition enumerated uh, into odd number with distinct parts both are equal. So, we already proved in the earlier class the terms is if n is a pentagonal number then both are the terms is partition e uh, partition enumerated into E1 number of distinct parts is equal to partition enumerated with odd number odd number with distinct parts plus minus 1 to the power of R ok that is not equal to 0 that means the difference of these two partition it is not equal to 0 uh, that is minus 1 to the power of R if n is equal to R into 3 R plus R minus 1 by 2 that means if n is a pentagonal number that the difference of these two numbers that is equal to minus 1 to the power of r otherwise that value is equal to 0 ok. And we have to take that uh, by using the table it, it, it is very clear the terms if uh, n is number of n is a numbers and partition of n that is p of n and p suffix e that is partition enumerated into E1 number of distinct parts again partition enumerated into odd number with distinct parts and the total the difference ok. What are the pentagonal numbers? The pentagonal numbers are 1, 2 ok. Again that is 5 the terms is 5, 7 ok. The remainings are not pentagonal numbers so that is 3, 4, uh, 6 the remainings. So, that is minus 1 to the power of r is there, you can observe the terms is this difference is minus 1 to the power of r. So, if n is a pentagonal number, the terms is minus 1 to the power of 1, you can observe terms of minus 1 to the power of 1 means that is minus 1. So, that is if n is equal to 1, partition of 1 is 1, that is number of parts of n, again that values. So, therefore, a distinct e1 parts, that is only odd parts, so only 1 parts. So, there is a distinct odd parts, so only one means that is one distinct odd numbers are one. So, therefore, 1 minus 0 minus 1 that is equal to minus 1. So, this is the theorem. Again, 2 is also pentagonal number, you can observe terms of the partition of 2 is 2, that is a non increasing order 1 plus 1. Yet, the, the color indicates that is a distinct, that is a distinct odd parts. E1 parts are repeated number, you can observe in terms of 1 plus 1, you can observe in terms of the numbers are E1, uh, but it is not distinct because 2, 1 plus 1 is the distinct uh, uh, E1 part, but it is not distinct. So, therefore, that is 0, again that value of P suffix O of D comma N that is equal to 1 that is minus 1 because 2 is a what is 2? 2 is a E1 uh, sorry 2 is a pentagonal number. So, that is equal to minus 1 to the power of sorry minus 1 to the power of 2 
that means the 2 is 1 you can observe terms of that is minus 1 to the power of 1 that is also equal to minus 1. So, next 3, 3 is not a pentagonal number, we can observe terms of 3 is not a pentagonal number, but the partition of uh, 3 is 3, 2 plus 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1. So, here the blue indicates that is a odd number and distinct part, here uh, 2 plus 1 is even number with distinct parts. So, both are 1, 1 or 1 plus 1 are repeated numbers, so we want to consider this one, this odd parts, but not distinct, ok. That is 1, 1 that is 0. Again next one is 4, 4 is not a distinct, uh, 4 is not a pentagonal number, but we have to take the partition of 4 is 4, 3 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 2 plus 1 plus 1, again next one is 1 plus 1 plus 1, but the terms is next one, it will be appear. Again the partition, uh, it, this one is a even number of parts with distinct number 3 and 1. Again next one is the 4 is an odd number with distinct parts, we can observe terms of odd uh, number of parts are odd and distinct. So, therefore, that can be written as 1. So, 1 minus 1 that is equal to 0. Similarly, next one is 5, 5 can be written as 5, 5, 5 is also a pentagonal number, 4 plus 1, 3 plus 2, 3 plus 1, 1, 1, again 2 plus 2 plus 1. 1, 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, the remaining are 1, so 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So, therefore, error 4 plus 1, 3 plus 2, both are uh, distinct even parts, both are distinct even parts. Here, 5 is the only odd, uh, distinct odd parts. Here, 3 plus 1 plus 1 is also there, but 1 plus 1, that is not distinct. This one is odd parts not distinct. So, therefore, 2 is the partition enumerated e1 parts of distinct number and 1 is so that is a 5 is the partition enumerated by odd number of parts with distincts. So, therefore, 2 minus 1 that is equal to 1. 6 is not a pentagonal number that is 6 5 plus 1 4 plus 2 4 plus 1 plus 1. 3, 3 uh, again the terms of 3 plus 2 plus 1, 3 plus 1 plus 1, the remainings are uh, repeated not terms. So, we can consider the terms of partition enumerated with the distinct with uh, even number of parts that is 5 plus 1 and 4 plus 2, here 6 and 3 plus 2 plus 1. So, these are an odd number of parts with distinct, okay? that is also 2, 2, 2 minus 2 that is equal to 0. So, this is the terms we have to take in the examples, ok. We have to move to the next one, it is uh, product uh, n running from 1 to infinity 1 minus uh, q to the power of n is equal to 1 plus summation m running from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power of m into q to the power of m into 3m minus 1 by 2 into 1 plus q to the power of m that is mod q is less than 1. So, that is in terms of the Ramanujan theta function, the special case is f of minus q, that is uh, q q infinity is equal to summation m running from minus infinity to plus infinity minus 1 to the power of m into q to the power of uh, m into 3 m minus 1 by 2. So, we have to take in the values of the left hand, right hand side, I have to show this one as q q infinity or in terms of the product n running from 1 to infinity minus 1 minus q to the power of m. So, proof, uh, consider that uh, pentagonal number that is uh, m running from minus infinity to plus infinity minus 1 to the power of m into q to the power of m into 3 m minus 1 by 2. We have to split this one in terms of three parts. The first one is m running from minus infinity to minus 1 and m is equal to 0 and the positive integers that is m running from 1 to infinity. We can observe here m running from minus infinity to minus 1, minus 1 to the power of m into q to the power of m into m minus 1 by 2. Again, m is equal to 0, that is 1. Again, the term says uh, m is a positive integer, that is m is equal to 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power of m into q to the power of m into 3 m minus 1 by 2. So, in the first series, you can observe terms of, when I have to replace uh, m by minus m, that becomes m running from 1 to infinity here minus 1 to the power of minus m that is also is equal to minus 1 to the power of m because minus 1 to the power of minus m is also is equal to minus 1 to the power of m. 
have to take the value of m is equal to 1, 2, 3, both of that values are same. Here, when I have to replace m by minus m, here minus m into minus 3m minus 1, both all these values are negative. When I have to multiply inside the negative values, that is uh, m into 3m plus 1, that is the first series. When I have to replace after, uh, replace the terms of m by minus m in the first series, you obtain that is uh, m running from 1 to infinity, not minus uh, infinity to minus 1, that is 1 to infinity, minus 1 to the power of minus m into q to the power of this sign becomes positive, that is m into 3m plus 1 by 2 plus 1 plus summation m running from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power of m into q to the power of m into 3m minus 1 by 2. So, in this term, we can observe that this value q to the power of m into 3m plus 1 by 2, we have to take in this as a common factor here. So, that is why q to the power of m into 3m plus 1 by 2, here we have to as add and subtract the terms of minus 2, okay, in the terms of add and subtract 2 here, the terms is, so the 2 can be written as that is a minus 2 that becomes minus 1, here plus 2 is there, okay, add and subtract 2 here, that is a minus 2 plus 2, we can take out plus 2, okay, the terms becomes a 2m, q to the power of 2m by 2, another one is minus 2 is there minus 2 plus 1 thus becomes minus 1 that is that this case okay that next step is so 1 plus that is q is equal m is equal to 0 the next one is the series q to the power of 3m plus 1 by 2 that is we have to add and subtract the terms so that becomes q to the power of m okay so that is summation m running from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power of m into q to the power of m into 3m minus 1 by 2 into q to the power of m plus summation m running from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power of m into q to the power of m into 3m minus 1 by 2. Both that series is running from 1 to infinity and we have taken the common factor is minus 1 to the power of m into q to the power of m into 3m minus 1 by 2. So, therefore, here the terms is uh, 1 here, the remaining terms is q to the power of m. So, therefore, it can be written as summation 1 plus summation m running from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power of m into q to the power of 3m minus 1 by 2 as a common factor, the remaining term is 1 plus q to the power of m. So, therefore, that value of minus 1 to the power of m, that is the pentagonal number, that is a partition of even number, partition enumerated uh, even number of, uh, even number with distinct parts minus partition enumerated by odd number with distinct parts is equal to minus 1 to the power of m. So, that is p suffix e of d comma n minus p suffix o of d comma n that is minus 1 and the remaining term that is q to the power of n we have to observe here in the next term as 1 plus summation n from 1 to infinity we can replace the value of minus 1 to the power of n by using that last theorem. So, that is p suffix e of d comma n minus p suffix o of d comma n into q to the power of n what is n? So, the terms of n is that is uh, uh, n is equal to that is a pentagonal number m into 3m plus or minus 1 by 2. We can uh, take that multiplication, the terms is that is the same or minus 1 to the power of m is p suffix e of d comma n minus p suffix o of d comma n. So, then uh, we have to compute the terms is this one is the right hand side that must be is equal to a product of product running from 1 to infinity 1 minus q to the power of n or q q infinity. So, we know that the terms of product running from 1 to infinity 1 minus q to the power of n. So, by using the uh, q shifted factorial that is 1 minus q so terms is 1 minus uh, q square 1 minus q q 1 minus q to the power of 4. So, up to the terms that can be written as in terms of summation n running from a, a suffix 1 is equal to 0 to 1, summation a suffix 2 to 0 to 1, summation a suffix 3 to 0 to 1 that is is equal to up to infinite term because the terms is this is infinite minus 1 to the power of a 1 plus a 2 plus a 3 up to infinite term into q to the power of a 1 into 1 plus a 2 into 2 plus a 3 into 3. 
this value of the terms of 1 2 3 that is p sub p sub p of n p of 1 is equal to 1 p of 2 is equal to 2 p of 3 is equal to 3 after the multiplication that it can be written as in terms of a series so we have to observe the terms note that each of uh, each partition of n um, with the distinct parts contributes minus 1 to the power of a1 plus uh, uh, a2 into 2 plus a2 a3 into 3 that is the terms is a2 into 2 a2 into 3 uh, to the coefficient of q to the power of n okay that is terms is the coefficient of q to the power of n which is a plus 1 is the partition as uh, even parts okay and minus 1 is the partition as odd number of parts okay consequently that values of the terms is 1 minus q 1 minus q square 1 minus q cube that can be written as that value of uh, the taste summation is, sorry product running from 1 to infinity 1 minus q to the power of n is can be written as that is a q q infinity is equal to that is 1 minus q 1 minus q square 1 minus q cube so when i have to write in terms of a, some series that is 1 plus summation entering from 1 to infinity that is p suffix uh, that is e1 number that is e is missing here p suffix e of d comma n minus p suffix o of d comma n into q to the power of n what is n n is the pentagonal number the term is n is equal to uh, m into 3 m plus or minus 1 by 2 ok. So, therefore uh, and so desired the terms is we can taking that some few examples uh, how okay, can we write the terms of this series the terms of a product in terms of a series you can observe here we know that value of q q infinity or uh, it can be written as 1 minus q 1 minus q square 1 minus q cube up to infinite term we have to multiply the few terms here the terms is 1 minus q 1 minus q square the terms can be written as 1 minus q square where the terms is 1 minus q square here 1 minus q the terms is q square plus 1 okay. into 1 minus q cube it can be written as the terms is 1 minus q square minus q minus q q to the power of 2 plus 1 minus q q so the simple uh, multiplication so the, the terms is plus 1 is there you can observe the terms is we have to multiply two we have to multiply here few terms 1 is there that can be written as 1 plus the remaining term is summation n running for m running from 1 to infinity that is odd number of p suffix even number of distinct parts the p suffix e of d comma n minus p suffix uh, o of d comma n into q to the power of n here n must be a what is n n must be a pentagonal number so the terms is here 2 1 or pentagonal number here 3 3 that must be cancel that number the power of cube is cancelled ok the terms is here 4 is also cancelled the terms of 5 so similarly so I have to take in terms of a series I have to take the two series as a summation a1 running from 0 to 1 a2 running from 0 to 1 minus 1 to the power of a1 plus a2 into q to the power of a1 into 1 plus a2 into 2. So, the teams uh, when I have to take that first one a, a running from a2 running from 0 to 1 when I have to substitute a2 is equal to 0 ok and a2 is equal to 1 a2 is equal to 0 means that is a minus 1 to the power of a1 plus 0 into q to the power of a1 into 1 plus a2 is 0 ok plus minus 1 to the power of that is a2 is equal to 1 a1 plus 1 into q to the power of a1 into 1 plus 1 into 2 so or it can be rewritten as the terms is summation a1 running from 0 to 1 minus 1 to the power of a1 into q to the power of a1 because here the value is 0 in plus minus 1 to the power of a1 plus 1 into q to the power of a1 plus 2. So, therefore, here also we have to substitute a1 is equal to 0 that is and a1 is equal to 1. The terms can be written as a1 in a1 is equal to 0 that is minus 1 to the power of 0 and q to the power of 0 and the term here minus 1 to the power of 0 plus 1 again 
to the power of 0 plus 2 okay next one you have to take n is equal to a1 is equal to 1 that is minus 1 to the power of 1 into q to the power of 1 here minus 1 to the power of 1 plus 1 into q to the power of 1 plus 2 that becomes the, the first value is that power of 0 that is 1 here a minus 1 to the power of 1 into q square that is minus q square here minus q to the power of 1 minus q, uh, q power 1 again plus q to the power of 3 so likewise the terms of multiplication so therefore q q infinity can be written as 1 plus summation n running from uh, 0 to infinity p suffix uh, uh, e of d comma n minus p suffix o of d comma n into q to the power of n where n is a pentagonal number okay so by using this one we have to take that example uh, we have to take the corollary so how can you find out the partition of n so we have to taking a huge number suppose n is equal to 20 30 40 so we can easily take that formula the recurrence uh, formula that is if n is a positive integer n is greater than 0 then so exam this is very very important for the examination that either 2 or 3 marks question uh, p of minus n my p of n minus p of n minus 1 minus p of n minus 2 plus p of n minus 3 sorry n minus 5 that is only in terms of n is a pentagonal number we can use the terms of 0 1 2 5 7 again next one is 12 15 likewise that number that is equal to 0 or it can be written as that is a p n is equal to when i want to find out if n is equal to 1 2 3 so in that time you can take in that values p n is equal to p of n minus 1 plus p of n minus 2 minus p of n minus 5 minus p of n minus 7 up to infinite term so two terms that is a positive and two terms again negative likewise the terms is the next terms a p of uh, n minus 12 plus p of n minus uh, 15 okay the terms is it can be it will go on like that numbers the proof by using that Euler pentagonal number that is uh, q q infinity is equal to summation n running from minus infinity plus infinity minus 1 to the power of n into q to the power of uh, 3n square minus n divided by 2 here we have to split the terms of uh, n is equal to 0 and n is equal to uh, uh, the terms of negative and positive terms so it can be written like this the terms is okay after the terms is when I have to replace uh, n by minus n that is the plus infinity not minus infinity it is like typing error that is plus infinity so it should be appear like this and that and we have to substitute the value of what is n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2 okay n is equal to 1 2 3 that values so here the terms is if n is equal to 1 2 3 the first number is 1 next number is 5 next number is 12 okay the, again that means this one is n is equal to the terms is uh, 2 7 likewise the values that pentagonal numbers you can observe here 1 plus minus q plus uh, q to the power of 5 minus q to the power of 12 plus so the first slide that shows that pentagonal numbers as in here minus q square plus q to the power of 7 minus q, q, q to the power of 15 we have to combine together that values of q q infinity that is 1 minus q minus q square plus q to the power of 5 plus q to the power of 7 minus q to the power of 12 minus q to the power of 15 you can call this one as equation 1 so this is equation 2 we know that uh, q q infinity in terms of a partition it can be written as q q infinity is equal to 1 plus uh, summation entering from 1 to infinity p of n into q to the power of n so that Euler identity we have to take in the terms is so it's q q infinity is equal to 1 plus summation entering from 1 to infinity p of n into q to the power of n so we have to prove this one by using consider 1 is equal to the terms is uh, uh, not this one is uh, it's 1 by q q infinity not the terms of q q infinity 1 by q q in infinity not the terms okay this typing error 1 divided by q q infinity you know the value of uh, 1 that can be written as q in q infinity divided by q q infinity the terms is um, 1 minus q 1 minus q square 1 minus q to the power of 5 by using equation 2 and 1 divided by q q infinity and this not q q infinity 1 divided by q q infinity as euler identity in terms of a partition that is 1 plus 
summation entering from 1 to infinity uh, p of n into q to the power of n. Now, this one when I have to multiply the first term into 1, there the whole term into the partition summation. You can observe in terms of when to multiply 1 with this whole number again uh, with the summation and the whole number we have to, we have to take in this one. So, therefore, that can be written as 1 minus q minus q square plus q to the power of 5 plus q to the power of 7 minus q to the power of 12 minus q to the power of 15 up to 1. And the next one, we have to multiply the terms of summation with 1 minus q minus q square minus q to the sorry, plus q to the power of 5. Likewise, here 1 with summation entering from 1 to infinity p of n into q to the power of n. Next, minus q. Uh, entering from 1 to infinity p of n into q to the power of n, n again q minus q square into that series plus q to the power of 5 into series again plus q to the power of 7 into that series minus q to the power of 12 into series minus q to the power of 15 into series up to infinite term. So, where to multiply that inside the q here inside the series that is q to the power of n plus 1 here we may not multiply that q square inside that is q to the power of n plus 2 here also uh, multiply that is q to the power of n plus 5. So, that is the terms. So, on that and also that left hand side that is a 1 is there here 1 minus 1 which it will comes to right, uh, LHS side that becomes 0 is equal to minus q minus q square minus plus q to the power of 5 plus q to the power of 7 minus q to the power of 12 minus q to the power of 15 or uh, the terms is uh, can remove the bracket up to infinite term here also up to the infinite term plus summation n from 1 to infinity p of n into q to the power of n minus uh, we have to multiply the terms of q inside there is a p of n into q to the power of n plus 1 minus series with the terms of p of n into q to the power of n plus 2. Similarly, the values we have to multiply the terms here here q to the power of uh, n plus 5 q to the power of n plus 7, q to the power of n plus 2, q to the power of n plus 15. Likewise, so we want uh, the terms of uh, the coefficient of q to the power of n only the left uh, right hand side. So, that is why so in the second series uh, I have to observe this one the second series we can replace uh, n by n minus 1 n by n minus 1 that becomes plus 1 and minus 1 get cancelled that is q to the power of n. When I have to taking n by n minus 1 that is p of n minus 1. Similarly, here also replace n by n minus 2 in this third series that becomes p of n minus 2 into q to the power of n. Here also p of n minus 5 into q to the power of n, p, p of n minus 7 into q to the power of n after the replacement of n by n, n minus 1. Again, the, this one is when I have to replace n by n minus 12 that is p of n minus 12 into q to the power of n. Here also similarly p of n minus 15 in q to the power of n up to the terms here up to infinite term and also we know the value of uh, p of a negative number that is, is equal to 0 p of minus n is equal to 0. So, the terms so when I have to replace n by n minus 1 you can observe the terms of p of uh, n by n minus 1 means uh, that is uh, n minus 1 replace the value of n by n minus 1 that value becomes n minus 1 that can be written as that is that value is equal to 0 because negative values. So, therefore, 0 is equal to minus q minus q square plus q to the power of 5 up to infinite term and the remaining term the first series is p of n into q to the power of n the second series is p of n minus 1 into q to the power of n big the series is we can observe that values here the series is the starting that number that is n running from 1 to infinity because so when you have to take the terms of that last one that is n is equal to 2. So, that is when I have to substitute that value of n is equal to 1 that is p of 0 that is also 1. So, by using the simple manipulation that the remaining term is also the terms is it is not q that is the terms is it is a typing error that is a p of n minus 2 into q to the power of n here also some summation ending from 1 to infinity that whole term is also the series is summation entering from 1 to infinity with because the condition is p of minus n is equal to 0. So, that and also when I have to compare the coefficient of q to the power of n on the both this side. So, it can be written as the left hand side that is 0 
on the right hand side when I have to compare the coefficient of q to the power of n we get the required result that is p to the power of p of n minus p of n minus 1 p of n minus 2 so up to the term is that is equal to 0 or p of n is equal to it is uh, p of n minus 1 plus p of n minus 2 minus p of n minus 5 minus p of n minus 7 plus up to infinite term so this pro provides an extreme uh, extremely efficient algorithm for computing p of n okay if that uh, if it is easily find out the terms of what is the value of p of 1 that is in terms of p of 1 p of 2 p of 3 partition of n when are to taking the terms of if n is equal to 10 n is equal to 100 n is equal to 30 50 70 so it is very difficult to find out so when are to taking this recommendation it can be easily proved up we have to take that uh, example put n is equal to 1 in this equation we can call this one as equation 4 so we have to put n is equal to 1 so we get the terms of p of 1 is equal to p of 1 minus 1 plus p of n minus 2 p minus p of n minus 5 likewise the terms that is p of 0 p of uh, minus 1 p of 1 minus 5 that is minus 4 1 minus 6 that is p of minus 6 p of minus 11 so now the value of p of negative number that value is equal to 0 so only we can that take in the value of p of 0 is 1 so therefore p of 1 is also 1 put n is equal to 2 in the uh, in the equation 4 we get the terms of p of 2 that is uh, p of 2 minus 1 p of 2 minus 2 p of 2 minus 5 p of 2 minus 7 p of 2 minus 12 up to infinite term the terms is only first two terms the remaining terms are negative terms the first term is p of 1 and the second term is p of 0 the remaining are that is a negative that all these values are 0 after the first two numbers that is now the value of p of 1 that is 1 and p of 0 is also 1 that is so therefore p of 2 is equal to 2 similarly when i have to take put n is equal to 3 in equation 4 we get the terms of p of 3 is equal to p of 3 minus 1 p of 3 minus 2 p of 3 minus 5 so after the second digit that is the numbers are negative 3 minus 5 3 minus 7 3 minus 12 so therefore the terms is p of 2 the first number p of again the second number is p of 1 minus the remaining are negative numbers so therefore 2 plus 1 p of 2 is equal to 2 and p of 1 is equal to 1 the remaining terms of 0 because p of minus n is 0 so therefore p of 3 is equal to 3 similarly when i have to find out n is equal to 4 in equation 5 we get p of 4 is equal to p of 4 minus 1 p of 4 minus 2 here also I, except the first one the remaining are negative number so therefore the first one is p of 3 and the second one is p of 2 and that is p of 3 is 3 and p of 2 is 2 therefore p of 4 is equal to 5 uh, so therefore uh, it can be written as in the next one put n is equal to 5 n is equal to n is equal to 5 in the equation we get uh, p of 5 is equal to p of 5 minus 1 p of 5 minus 2 minus p of 5 minus 5 so except the first two three terms the remaining terms are negative because that 5 is more than that one that number is um, so therefore except the first two three numbers uh, p of 4 p of 3 minus p of 0 the remaining are negative that is 0 uh, so the first three numbers p of 4 is 5 p of 3 is 3 and p of 0 is 1 therefore 5 plus 3 minus 1 so that is equal to 7 p of 5 is equal to 7 similarly put 10 is equal to 6 we get the terms is p of 6 minus 1 p of 6 minus 2 p of 6 minus 5 p of 6 minus 7 p of 6 minus 12 so therefore p of 5 though except here also the first two three terms the remaining terms are negative so the first three terms are that is 7 plus 5 minus 1 so therefore p of minus n is equal to 0 because that negative terms so 5 plus 7 that is 12 minus 1 that is p of 6 is equal to 11 similarly we can easily find out that other values okay uh, now we have to winding this session. Thank you.